Hey, we're here with my friend Kevin today. Kevin's got a 3039R. We're gonna try out this TS-10 on his tractor. He's driven all the way from Kentucky to try this. We're also gonna talk about some of the details of this TS-10 cutter. I've shown you it cutting before, but I haven't really shown you much of the details about some implementation. So we'll talk through some of that with Kevin and I think you guys will find it interesting too. Let's get started. Folks have asked me why we put the bolt in from the bottom and uh, well the primary reason is because that's how dad did it. The question is well why did dad do it that way? I think it was because he didn't want as much protruding out the bottom. And I think he didn't want uh, roots or, or grass or whatever to be able to rub on those nuts and uh, work them loose. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do here, Kevin, is measure to make sure <laughs> that your draw bar is long enough. It's supposed to be 14 inches minimum. You probably saw the video where I busted out the whole back end of my tractor. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. That was painful. So yours is long enough. We're not going to bust out the back end of your tractor today. Good. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> do you want to hook this thing up or um, do you want me to? Uh, we, e either one. Okay. Uh, so uh, this PTO shaft uh, is a lot heavier than a normal one. I noticed that. That's the first thing. The second thing is this is the thing that you pull back. Mm -hmm. It's got an advanced feature so that when you pull it back, it locks. So you don't have to hold it back. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Does that make sense? Yes. So all you've got to do is get this on there, and then once you slide it far enough, it will snap in on its own. Okay. And if it, and if it happens, to, if you happen to hear it snap, you may have to pull it back again if it gets premature. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. This is a heavy one, but I'll let you try it, see if you can do it. All right. Okay, now we're in mid. By putting it in mid, it allows the PTO shaft to rotate. It does. Okay. That should be the easiest possible position. Folks, if you have a mid PTO and you can shift the selector to mid only, this allows your PTO shaft to freely rotate. If you can have both sides freely rotating, the mower as well as the PTO shaft, it's a lot easier to get those splines to line up. And we are. And I heard it snap. Yep. And you could see it go in there. I like the, the extra thickness of this cover because you can almost use it as a handhold yeah. to direct the shaft without trying to hold around it. Yeah, now see this is a fancier CV shaft, CV joint, whatever. I'm not an expert on this, but the point is it allows more horsepower than a standard U-joint. And so it's got multiple connections in there to make that turn. Okay, now don't worry about the jack. We'll raise it up in a minute. <laughs> You have one rear SCV. Now this is an electric control one, right? You use Correct. it for your third function. Correct. What we're gonna do is we'll just unplug these so that we're not gonna route that third function to the front. They'll be fine, but we'll zip tie those in a minute. Okay. And then this one, we'll put on the up-down circuit. Okay, we'll plug this one in. Let's see, we want it in the, I think this spot right here. Now we're left with one more hose and we don't have any more outlets. There's, uh, if, if you buy one of these units, Kevin, you can get it such that it shares one SCV for, for both, both lift and raise. Okay. And the way that works is, is it raises all the way up, and then once it gets raised all the way up, then it, then it starts to fold the wings. Okay. I have it, since I have two SCVs, I have it configured so that you use a separate SCV to do the wings and the raise lower. Okay. And so what I thought we would do, after I got the rocks off of this. What I thought we'd do is use an extension hose that I've got from discounthydraulichose.com, by the way. Okay. 5% off with coupon code TTWT. A hydraulic hose to go to your front SCV, and we'll just run it across the floorboard since it's temporary, right? That'll be fine. Let me find that. Now, I'm not exactly sure which one we need to be in, so let's try that. Okay. First try your third function up. Yeah, the top side. Hey, that's perfect. That one worked right then. Okay. Down, up. Okay, now try pulling that way on your stick. Look at that, we got both of them right. 
First time. First try. Wow. Okay. Now, I want you to, when we're actually mowing, to run that in the float position. Okay. And that lets the wings float. Okay. That's why I wanted to hook it to the to this one, because this is the one of your joystick that has float, right? You don't have really a float on the left Float right. on the curl circuit. Okay. Kevin, I thought maybe it'd be worthwhile to go through just some of the unique features of this particular flex wing, because I, I drove a, a multi-spindle mower the other day, and I, I guess I hadn't operated any other brands or, or just any other models, and I immediately saw a few things that I had taken for granted. I assumed every flex wing had, okay. and this one doesn't. So the main thing that I want to talk about is this rod that goes from the back, from the wheels back there, see, from that axle, okay. all the way to the front here to the draw bar. Now, the one I drove the other day, the draw bar was a fixed height. So when you raised the mower, the back end of the mower came up, and the front end just moved a little bit. Okay. This one with this rod, as you raise the mower, that rod gets pulled that way, and the tongue turns downward. So this mower will stay Still level humble. as you, throughout the, throughout the range of travel, raise and lower. Nice feature. It's a nice feature. It's a really nice feature. What we're going to have to do is, because the draw bar is lower on this than on Johnny Five, we will have to adjust that rod. I believe we will have to shorten that rod to pick up the front out a little bit, right? Because, okay. because Johnny Five would hold the front up higher on right. its own. So that's the first thing we're going to have to do. Now, while we're here, though, we might talk about a few other features that people would kind of say, hey, this, this mower is really expensive. You know, I mean, it's a lot more than a single spindle mower. But I wanted to show you a little bit why, right? I mean, we've got this huge gearbox here in the middle, right, that splits it three ways. We've got um, slip clutches on all three segments here. So each spindle has the only, their own independent slip clutch. Now, from a maintenance standpoint, I find this a little bit of a challenge. Each one of these, like this, this shaft has one, two, three, four, it says five grease fittings on this shaft. This one up here, what was it, eight? Eight or nine for the one, for the tractor because of that CV joint. Right. Uh, when it's time to grease this thing, and yeah, you grease it. I don't know, do you grease or do you grease? Um, depends. Uh, but normally it's grease. You, you if, grease. If, 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 I, I it, apply grease, but the act of applying grease is to grease. grease. I may say grease and not know it. You'll, well, you'll, let me, you'll have to catch me. Let me just say this. You'll have plenty of time to decide whether you're saying <laughs> grease or grease when you're doing that action on this attachment because it takes a long time to, to fully lubricate this attachment. It, it's just, it's a lot of work. You Now, what I do is I unhook the main PTO shaft and, oh, here's another feature. When I'm working on these sides, I actually unhook these PTO shafts, right? This allows me to turn just that one blade, get these U-joints wherever I need them to be able to, to handle that. So that's a nice, a nice feature that it's a quick disconnect. And these have these large, uh, large splines, uh, same as a they call it the large 1000 spline. For the 1000 RPM? 1000 RPM on the big tractors. So these are, that's what, that's what that looks like. So a, a big tractor would come with this larger PTO shaft mm -hmm. that spins a thousand. There's two different sizes of thousand shafts. This is the larger one here, but that's kind of irrelevant, but that's, that's why that shaft looks different. This is uh, spring loaded, right? And a lot of these were, you had to unbolt something. Okay. Now yeah. to adjust the cutting height, First of all, you raise your hydraulic cylinder. You can, you can raise your hydraulic cylinder anytime you want, to, but this sets the, the lowest depth you're going to actually cut, right, is, is how many of these um, collars, collars that you put on it. Now, I think we'll want to cut a little lower than what I was that day, so I'm going to put a smaller collar on there. And if we decide that's still a little bit high, we'll, we'll change that when we get to the field. Okay. But for now, I think I'll take all those collars off and I'll have you lay it all the way on the ground and maybe this, maybe I can lengthen this shaft a little easier. Okay. Oh, look at that. That tractor really runs quiet. I, yes, it does. I'm but impressed. But it's not the new electric version. Oh, okay. Well, let me know when you get that new electric version. I've prob You probably won't see me on one. <laughs>
<laughs> now, once you get this shaft ad adjusted for your for your particular tractor, your drawbar height, you don't have to adjust it again. Uh, there's no need to adjust it again at all. So it, it's, it's not a repeat adjustment. The reason it's a repeat adjustment for us is because we run this thing on several different tractors, just like today, just to experiment. But even on my own property, I run it on Johnny 2 or Johnny 5, and they have about this far different drawbar heights. Yeah, we're starting to get some tension on it now because mm -hmm. I can't move the bar. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look at it now. See if it looks any different. Oh, that's looking better. At least Comes it picked, up quite a bit higher now. At least it picked the jack up off the ground, huh? One piece of advice before we get out in the field: don't turn it too short. Right? Okay. That they say that CV joint can be broken if we turn it too short. All right. What is too short? I don't exactly know, and I won't know until we break it. Um, but one <laughs> Let's thing I would try that theory today, though. Use use this for a guide. Don't okay. turn don't turn this into your uh, All right. plastic there, and we'll we'll try to use that as a as a guide. And that little tractor, right? It would be able to whip right around. Yeah, and we put it in a lot of binds. It's so. pretty nimble, so yeah, we'll take forty acres. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of see, but just, you, you, and you'll kind of feel it. You'll kind of know, I think you will. You'll say, hey, I'm, I'm probably turning it pretty short. I think I'll let off just a little, right? Now, notice it goes down and up really slowly. There's a restrictor in the valve back here to slow okay. that down. It gives you a little more chance oh, for it. Hold it. I didn't put any uh, collars in. That's too low, isn't it? Let's go up. Okay. That's like lawnmower height right there. There we go. Cut the front yard. <laughs> you ready to go tear something up? Yep. Just so it isn't your mower or my tractor. Okay. Yeah, let's make it make sure it's the, the weeds. To raise it up and then try folding it up. There's no restrictor on this. <laughs> Do we need to go all the way up? Yep. Okay. Now, when you're transporting it, one thing you notice with this little 10 foot cutter, those wheels that are left on the ground are right. not very far apart. So it's, it's kind of tipsy, right? Okay. I'm glad that I got all four wheels down there, but uh, on a bigger mower, they're able to spread out more. But see, each blade is just over three feet, like three and a third foot wide, right? That's all okay. each blade cuts, so. And it's it's narrow as the tractor. Narrow. Maybe even more narrow than the yeah. tractor, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it really folds up nice. A uh, couple other features, Kevin, on this particular mower. First, these, uh, they call them rhino tracks. I mean, that's kind of a gimmick, but these are foam filled. So you'll actually see an air fitting on them, but they don't use any air. They're foam filled <laughs> and th they feel like these are better tires or better. Yeah, better tires than the flaps, you know, the flap wheels that okay, you see yes. on the but they, like on my cutter. Yeah, most most uh, most cutters have the flap wheels and this one has that as I think an entry level option. But these this is an upgraded option. And the other option here that we've got is these two inner tires right here. It only comes by default with the standard with the uh, two outside tires here. I don't know. I, I like having all four of them down there, but I don't know if that's a, an absolute requirement or not. Well, the one thing you mentioned earlier is this mower has more lift as opposed to the single spindle cutter like I currently have. Yeah, cutting I, lift. I, I leave that track in especially the tail wheel leaves that track in the in the field after yeah. you're done cutting. Yeah. And you see th this one has enough lift that it cuts out those tracks. Well, well, you know, you, you can try to prove that statement or not. Okay. My assertion is, guys, you, you can check this out and, and we'll have Kevin look when we get to the field here in just a second. But my assertion is that this mower will cre create more suction and will pick up those uh, the, the brush and the grass that gets knocked down by the tractor tires. 
Whereas a single spindle mower, those get knocked down and maybe one side kind of gets picked up a little bit, the right side, but the left side, it just hits it down more, right? And I don't think you'll see that here. Let's go check it out. Okay.